What's up, Rick and Poppy? What's up? How you doing? How's everybody doing? Check it in. Appreciate you checking in. Appreciate you checking in. I see you, Mary. Hi, Veer Patel. Appreciate you checking in. Uh, Antone K. Williams, see you checking in. Humble Fit, checking in. I appreciate you all checking in. Out South Nas, I see you. Great job. Good to see that you've been doing good, Rick and Poppy. We got a great show tonight. We have a real good show tonight. I'm excited about it. We got a real good show. Got a lot of, a lot of knowledge to drop tonight. A guy that's uh, a legend in the game. Uh, been around coaching 20-some years. He was All-American. Played at Oak Hill. The accolades could go on and on. But more importantly, probably has one of the best stories that young people really need to hear. Uh, I'm excited to have him in. I've been knowing him for many years. Um, we actually come from the same area. So uh been knowing him, like I said, many years. Great guy. Uh, excited to have him. Uh, he's one of the original people that... Uh, you know, started in this game many years ago. Um, he's now a motivational speaker, brings a lot of knowledge to the game. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've listened to his story and, and just appreciated who this guy was and what he brings to the game. Uh, he brings so much to the game, so much knowledge. We're going to have him in in a few minutes. Uh, I'm excited for you to have him, but this this guy brings so much different aspects, you know, from as a player, as a coach. He's been high, he's been down, um, he's he's bounced back. He's a true story that I think everybody uh, should really understand. And we're going to have him on in a little bit. And but before we start, I really want you to just to know a little bit more about who we bringing in tonight. So we're just gonna play a little bit of this and just, just listen up. But I learned at an early age, you see I was a single, uh, my mom was a single uh, parent. I got three brothers. And so, in the streets. I was constantly, my mom worked three jobs. She had to make three jobs just to make ends meet. So I had people who bested in me, but at an early age, I left one thing out. I left my cow. As I was building my game, I wasn't building my character. As I was building my game out, as I was working on my crossover, as I was working on my quickness, I didn't build my character. But one of the things that I did, as I continued to, to, to do the wrong thing, I started to hang around people who was doing the wrong thing. Association brings assimilation. If you show me who you hang around with, I'm going to show you your vision. I'm going to show you your future. Because if you hang around people who's doing the negative things and getting in trouble who don't have goals, well, guess what? You're going to do the same thing. That's how your life is going to be. So you're going to get in trouble. But if you hang around lawyers and people who have goals, that's what you're going to do. So what I started to do at the age of 9 to 10 years old, I started to hang around this gang. See, back in the day, we had a gang that shot called me. I ended up joining the heat men at the age of 9 to 10 years old. So you know what they did? They was all older guys. So you know what they did? They got high, they ran cars, they did this, they went out and got in trouble. So I started doing the same thing. So at the age of 10 years old, I started smoking weed. Still playing basketball, still hooping, still killing them. At the age of 12 years old, first time going to jail, first time getting caught in the criminal justice system, ended up going to jail for stealing the car. So from the age of 13 to 19, I stayed back and forth in jail. But see, here's the ironic part about it. I'm still hooping. I'm still doing everything I want. I'm excited to bring this young man in. Let's get, a, get, a, get him in here and let him tell him himself a little bit about himself to you all. I've been knowing him many years, but we, I'm going to let him come in and tell you uh, a little bit about his background because tonight y'all in for a treat. We got a great story. We're going to bring him in now. Without further ado, we're going to bring in Coach Corey Baker, the man who has the story you need to hear. Coach Corey. How you doing? Hey, man, I'm glad to have you in, Coach Corey. How's everything? It's going good, man. How you doing, Coach? Man, 
doing well, man. You know, you and I go way back, man. I've been knowing you many years. Uh, we come from a lot of the same stomping grounds, and you know, man, yes, it, yes. It, it was only right you be in the building and tell the your story, man, because you've seen it from a standpoint that not many people have. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yes. So, so before we get started, man, I want you to just kind of introduce yourself for those who don't know who you are. Well, my name is Corey Baker from Charlotte, North Carolina, born and bred it. Uh, done been around a long time. I've uh, been been in this basketball game. I'm 49. Been around basketball since I was 46 uh, for 46 years now. So that since I was three years old, I done been around basketball some form of fashion. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. So, so now you've been around in different aspects, but they yes. gotta know Coach <laughs> Bake. Coach Bake ain't just a coach that uh, just watched TV and learned the game. Coach Bake was actually a player that could, that could hoop, right? And 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 so I want you, you know, you're an OG in the game, but I want you to tell right now your basketball side, and while you tell your basketball side. I'm going to let them watch a little bit of your basketball game. Tell them a little bit about who you are as a basketball player. I see you got that oak uh, uh highlight up there. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, I've uh, uh, been around basketball, like I said, been around basketball a long time, man. And uh, But started playing when I was three years old. Started playing when I was like three years old. And I started playing at the age of three. You know, I wasn't just really playing just like the other just out there. Just No, nah, I was I was playing for real at three years old. I was playing with six and seven and eight-year-olds. And, and so I, I knew at that age that, you know, God had gave me a gift. And, and so at that age... I just took it and ran with it, and, and you know I was serious about it. So that means everywhere that I everything everything about my life at, at that age was basketball, and and so um, you know guys knew that whenever whenever me and my brothers came to any court or did anything, they go them Baker boys. So hey, they serious about this thing. So we better be on top of our game. Right. And, you know, and, and so they, they knew, you know, people around the Charlotte area and North Carolina, they, they knew I wasn't playing with it because I was serious about it. Every time I touch it, you know, you know, I, I was I, I was out to, you know, to 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 tear your head off. <laughs> right, right, right. And you went on to play at Oak Hill, right? Yeah, I went on to play at Oak Hill. Actually, I was the first eighth grader in the state of North Carolina to play high school. I was eighth grade going to a middle school, Spall Middle School, but I couldn't play at Spall Middle School, so they made me play at Harden High School. And the thing about it then, they was like, well, we can't tell you whether you play JV or varsity. They just weren't going to let me play middle school. And uh, But I play, I end up starting on the varsity as an eighth grader uh, at Harden High School. I went to Harden High School, played one year at Harden. Uh, then I went to uh, uh, Providence Day, my 10th grade year. And after that, I just I left and went to Oak Hill my junior and senior year. It, you know, it was it was just so much going on here in Charlotte. I wasn't making good decisions. I was back and forth doing this, and and so my mom and and a, and, a, and a family friend, this guy by the name of uh, Mr. B V Belt, they just felt that it was best for me to in Charlotte because my athletic ability because you know I could have went anywhere with athletic ability because I was just getting in so much trouble around here in Charlotte and they just said no nah, we just got to get you away and and so you know uh that's when I end up going to Oak Hill and and having uh, having a pretty good career at Oak Hill yeah yeah pretty good career you uh broke had the assist record there and everything until to yeah. to a, to a, to a, to a for, for quite some time now now who were some of the better while you were in high school? Oh, I played against everybody. Everybody, uh, so well, it was this kid about, I played with, well, here in Charlotte, uh, you know, the play, the guys I played with and against, you had Larry Crowder, you had Rodney Farrington, you had, uh, you know, big Juan Mason, Keith Ison, and, and so, you know, uh, uh, those guys, man, when I was growing up, they, they was, you know, pretty much older. So, you know, when, when you go against those, your, your game better be tight. And as I as I went on as I went on and went to Oak Hill, man, I played with this kid, the guy right there, dunking about a guy by the name of Anthony Cade from uh from the uh, New York. 
He probably one of the best players that I've ever seen play high school basketball. Six mm. eleven. He was he was a Kevin Garnett before it was a Kevin Garnett. Mm. And you know, so you know, he can do it all. And and a man that got by the name of Carlos Cofield out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And you know, that was my road dog down here in Charlotte. But we went up to Oak Hill together. And when we went up to Oak Hill, man, we you know we played against everybody. We played against uh. You know, we played against Randolph Childress. That's when they had uh, George Lynch, uh, yeah. Big Surge, uh, Randolph Childress. We, uh, they, they, they all went to Flint Hill. And then we played against Corey Alexander. I went to, you know, Nike camp. And so everybody was at Nike camp. Anthony Hardaway, uh, man, Rodney Rogers, and Jamie Watson. We was roommates. So, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I played with, you know, me and Jamie Brandon and Cherokee Paul. So we was teammates up there. So, really? you know, I played. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I played against the best and, and everything, you know. So every time uh, we, we travel with Oak Hill, we always playing against top competition. So we weren't playing against no cupcakes. So you right. had to show your skills every time you touch the floor. Right, right. Yeah, now, so. you, you speak on Oak Hill. Tell us, because, you know, a lot of kids, they want to play at Oak Hill and, and get the experience. Two things. One, what was your experience of playing at Oak Hill? And two, how was your relationship with Coach Smith then and now? Well, playing at Oak Hill was probably one of the most memorable experiences in my life, man. And I look at kids now and everybody talk about Oak Hill, Oak Hill, Oak Hill. And, you know, I, I knew about Oak Hill when I first went. Uh, but it wasn't what it was today. So just building and, and they, they had a name, but not nothing like it was today. But just being up there, traveling and and doing the things, man, it was a, it was a great experience for me, uh, because it gave me the opportunity to experience different things. And so just living on campus and and it gave me a feel of a college station. And so all of those things. So basketball is all we had to do because you you right there on in the middle of the mountains, nowhere to go. You ain't got nothing but woods around you. So you know, you stayed in the gym. So you know, I mean, a lot of people. Hold on, hold, out. hold on, coach. I think, coach. Hold on. I think you. I think your Wi-Fi getting stuck there for a second. Hold on one second. Hold on. Let's see. You may have to end up. How's your signal there? You may have to end up cutting your Wi-Fi off. I don't know. No, I'm good. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. You clearing up a little bit. Okay. There you go. Now nice. it's good. Yeah. It's it's getting better. There you go. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh huh. All right. So a lot of people, you know, say you know they can't go to Oak Hill because of living on campus. But for me, I loved it. I, I think it was the best place for me because it it got me around all. It got me from around all that mess, and it got me just focused on what I needed to focus on my grades in school. Right and and so, but my relationship with uh, with Coach Smith, love the guy then, love him now, still stay in touch with him. Uh, him and his wife was a big part of, you know, they they was a big part of my life then, and they 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 still a big part of my life now. Talk to Coach Smith on a regular basis anytime I need something or just you know um you know he's he's always there for me. Matter of fact, you know I still go up to Oak Hill right now sometime to go speak to the students and just to be a part of what they got going on. So we have more than just a, a basketball, a coach relationship. You know, I, you know, he's a, he's a true friend. I tell people, even, even though I didn't go to the NBA, he don't treat me no different than he treat Jerry Stackhouse. Then he treat Carmela Anthony that, that, you know, I can call him right now, just like they can call him. You know, I, I think my, our relationship uh, uh, is just as important as his relationship with those guys. Mm, no, nah, that's that's good stuff that y'all, you know, continue to have that relationship, man. A lot of a lot of coaches are just coaches and not mentors. Um, no. And 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 I've heard nothing but good things about Coach Smith from his players. Um, yeah, he he's a great guy, man. He's a great guy. And, and I tell people, he a Hall of Fame coach, but he a Hall of Fame person. He a Hall of Fame man, and and, and that's the and that's the and that that's more important to me because my whole life, you know. Coaches just wanted me around because of my ability to play basketball and this and that and this and that. But I can honestly say him and I got other coaches, Clarence Johnson, which is down here in Charlotte, coach at Malachi. Uh, they refer to him as CJ, you know, so him, Coach Smith and some other coaches, you know, they they are class A 
guys that 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 will always be a part of my life despite whatever despite basketball no that's good stuff and i'm sure that had a lot to do with why you're who you are to kids today um and and i think you know i told you once i heard your story and i knew you many years before i actually <laughs> yeah. heard in depth your story and and so yeah. It's, it's, it's a story that I think, and I, I told you, I need you to speak at my camps because it's a story people need to hear. This is real life. This ain't, yeah. you know, this ain't, you know, you know, the, the Cinderella story with, with the princes at the end. This is real life that, that you deal with, that, that the neighbors deal with, that these kids out here are dealing with. You have a story. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you the floor and I want you to tell people how we looking at this guy at the top up here one of the best players in the nation, ranked fifth point guard in the nation, and, and had all these offers, but the choices we made, you know, mm -hmm. can change yeah. everything. So I want you to take the floor and tell them about the choices you made. Well, the, 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 the ch my choices was probably the worst choices in the world, man. Uh, start making bad choices at the a at a very early age, man. And, and, um, the people who I associated with, they really didn't have nothing going on. That's why I tell kids all day, uh, all day long, you show me your friends, I'm going to show you your future. So you got to be careful of who you hanging around with. And you got to be careful of the things that you're doing and the choice of it because it can affect you. And, and because of, and because of some of the choices that I've made now, basketball done a lot for me. It done a lot for me, and I thank God for what it done for me. But because of some of the choices I made, I didn't get everything out of basketball that I could have got out of basketball. Mm -hmm. Because of my choices, started you know started getting high at an early age, started smoking weed, and and once I started smoking weed, and then I went what on. Age you smoke. started smoking weed? I thought that was I, important. I, I, yeah, I, at the age of ten years old. At the age of wow. 10 years old, I end up joining a gang. I was a part of this gang down here in Charlotte, the He-Men. And, and back in the day, the He-Men was, you know, everybody walking around buff and everything. And, but the thing about it, I'm still hooping. I'm still playing basketball. And everybody looking at me, Corey Baker, the basketball player. I never knew who I was. So I was always recognized and looked at, oh, that's Corey Baker, the basketball player. So I'm searching. I'm searching. I'm trying to find out who I am. And I'm thinking, hanging around those guys and doing those things. I'm thinking that's defining who I am. And, you know, I started smoking weed and the weed led to, you know, me snorting cocaine at the age of 14. And then by the time that I was 16 and 17, I'm smoking crack. And, you know, and and so it got to the point where once that point, once, once I'm doing that right there, basketball, I'm playing. But I'm not putting everything that I'm getting into it. Because so, so wait a minute, Corey. So let me. I want people to really understand what we're saying here. Now you're saying at 10 years old you started smoking marijuana. At, yeah. At 14 you started snorting cocaine, and yeah. by 16 and 17 you were smoking crack. Yes. That, yes. Like, like people need to really understand. We're talking about somebody that's not old enough to vote yet. You know what I mean? Exactly. You, exactly. You, you got what I'm saying? Go ahead, man. Exactly. I just wanted to emphasize exactly. that because people think, you know, oh, smoking weed is okay or mm -hmm. doing a little bit of cocaine here is okay because their friend's doing it. But it can lead to other things. You know it, what I mean? It, it, it can lead. To, it can lead. It, it can be the demise of your man. And here's the thing. I just thank God that I was able to bounce back and 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 and, and get to another level. I know a lot of people wasn't able to get to, to that next level. I know a lot of people that it, 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 it destroyed them. They still destroyed the day. And, you know, and so it, 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 can, it can turn your whole life upside down, not only your life, but your loved one's life. So a lot of kids think, okay, I just smoke this blunt and I just do this. But you don't even know, and especially today, they got so much crazy stuff out there. You don't even know what they putting in it. You know, and so, you know, they, they got all kinds of that crazy stuff. And so it can destroy everything that it, it, it can destroy all your dreams. It can just it destroy your hopes. It, it, it can destroy anything you think you want to do. You're not going to be able to do it because that's not going to allow you to give everything you got to give. And, and so, and that's what I went on. I went on through my life, man, and just messing up on opportunities. I end up going to a junior college. Uh, Shawan Junior College, and you know when I went to Shawan, 
I end up getting kicked out of Shawan because, again, I'm up there getting high. I'm making bad decisions, and so they end up kicking me out. I end up coming back to Charlotte, and when I end up coming back to Charlotte because I got kicked out, and I'm down in Charlotte doing nothing, hanging around the same people who I was hanging around with before I left. They were sitting on the same at the block doing the same thing when I came back, talking about what's up, bake. See, sometimes your friends and see people who call themselves your friends, they don't want to see you go no farther than what they go. And when you and when you come back, they sitting right there doing the same thing because they glad to see you back doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And so but I didn't realize that I'm thinking they're my boys. I'm thinking I don't want to get my ghetto pass revoked. Yeah, you know, and so I got another opportunity to go to uh, another uh, Division II school. I had an opportunity to go to Alabama. That's when Latrell Sprewell, I'm going to say uh, James Robinson, he had just left early. It's in 1993. He had just left early from Alabama. So Alabama called. I had an opportunity to go to Alabama once I left Shawan, but I couldn't go because my grades were still bad. Mm -hmm. So I still had to end up going to a junior college. I'm going to say I, uh, to a Division II school. So I got an opportunity to go to Shamana University in Hawaii. And instead of taking advantage of that, I end up getting Hawaii doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. See, it, it wasn't about it, – it, it, it's a geographical it, – it ain't about the geographical change. I had to take myself with me. So wherever it is that I go, I took Corey. So I, I still took that 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 negative thinking. I still took those same things. I still took that nasty attitude. I still think took that I'm the man syndrome. And so I get to Hawaii. Yeah, I'm still the best. I'm still hooping, but I can't give everything that I got. Why? Because getting high at that point was more important than anything else. And and while I was over there in Hawaii, I went from you know smoking crack to shooting heroin. Mm. And so I was I was homeless. I was I ended up being homeless while I was over there in uh, Hawaii. I got ended up getting kicked out of school over there, mm. you know. So that's two colleges that I was kicked out of, and end up coming back to the states in in, uh, in uh, uh, July of 1994. And when I came back to the states in July of 1994, instead of coming back doing something productive, I came back doing the same thing I always done. But I hated who I was, and so killing myself you know, was an option. So that's what I tried to do because I hate looking in the mirror every day. Mm. And, and and so, you know, man, I just, what, I well, did what, that. Do you, what do you mean you tried to kill yourself? What? Yeah, just went into a bathroom, man, and tried to blow my heart up, man. Just try to just, and, and you know, I was just smoking, try to just, I kept getting high, just time just putting, putting rocks on the stem, but right after one another, hoping my heart just busts to kill mm. myself, you know, mm. because, that was the way out for me. That was the way out for me because I didn't like who I was, nothing about me. I couldn't even stand looking at myself in the mirror. I had no dreams. I had no hope. I had no nothing. The thing I had was getting high. That's what I thought life was all about because at that point, I wasn't playing basketball, I, you know, and, and so – I was doing whatever it is I had to do to get high. I was robbing. I was stealing. I was conning. I was manipulating, doing whatever it was, just running game, just to try to get my next hit. And, and so at this point, it was more than crack. I was I was shooting heroin at this point. Mm. And so back mm. in so so October twenty seventh, man, and October actually October twenty sixth, man, uh, by five thirty in the morning, man, my mom called me. Called me one morning on October 26th, and she said, Corey, I know what's going on. She said, do you want help? And she came over. We prayed and everything. The next day, I was going off to a 28 day treatment program. That was October 27th, 1994, and everything started to blossom from there. Mm. Mm. So, you know, that's, when, that's when I figured out basketball is what I did. It wasn't who I was. Right, right. Oh. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. that's when I figured out that it was much more to my life than basketball. It, you know, and and my whole life, that's all I thought life was about was basketball, basketball, basketball. I thought, and people used to always say, "Bake when you go to the NBA, don't forget about me." Then I started to flip it on and say, "If I don't go to the NBA, don't forget about me." Mm. <laughs> you know, Good stuff. Because, you know, so but I had to change my whole. I had to change my whole set of friends. I had to change my mindset. I had to change. I, 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 I always, you know, I, 
I, I say this poem all the time. I watch my thoughts, they become words. I watch my words, they become actions. I watch my actions, they become habits. I watch my habits, they become character. I watch my character as it become my destiny. What I speak about, I can bring about. I will not sell it for less than I deserve. I'm a blessing, I'm a jewel, and I ascribe every day to become the success I'm destined to be. Basically what that's saying, everything starts with my thought process, man. Because if I think of what a man think of, he do it. So if, if I think in positive, don't care what the situation is, yo, I'm going to be positive because my action is going to be positive because my thought, it, it all starts with my thought process. No, man, that's, that's great stuff. That's great stuff. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, and that, the people need to hear that because somebody out there, you know, is, is maybe not that situation. It, it could be worse. It could be, close it could be very similar but they needed to hear that you know what i mean yeah. and and, yeah. and so you were able to move on you was able to get clean you was able to actually start coaching how did you start getting in the game of coaching well one of the things about it man how well well I, you know i was six months clean man and i'm at this point i'm 23 years old man and and and, and i'm still never had a job up until this point mm. never done anything and, and my first job when I got out of treatment, I was working at a place called, well, Wells Fargo, dealing with 60 to $70 million a day, carrying a 38, wearing a bullet, bulletproof vest. That was my first job with my criminal background record. Wow. You know, so um, a good friend of mine by the name of Byron Dinkins and Joe Badgett. Joe Badgett is the coach over there at uh, Karma Christian now. Um, uh, they came to me one day and they was like, um, well, Corey, you know, they they knew what I had went through, and so I still had another year to play basketball, but I had two more years to graduate. So they had connection with uh, over there at Pfeiffer University with Benny Moss and all of them. And so Benny, so they, so we went up there and Benny. So Benny called me. Benny said, "Listen here, man, I know who you are." He said, "I know everything about you." He said, "Now we want you to come in and play point guard." but we cannot give you a scholarship. You have to go to summer school because your grade, you got a 1.8 G, a 1.8 GPA. You have to go to summer school and you have to get three A's in order to come in and for us to get you a, a scholarship to be eligible. So he said, well, I just got married. He said, I live in a one bedroom apartment right here on campus. And he said, um, if you want to, you can come up here to go to Pfeiffer, go to summer school, and you can sleep on my couch. I ain't know him from a man in Moomba. He knew who I was. And so I said, I bet. He said, you think you can get three A's? I said, I knew I can get three A's. Now, I hadn't got three A's all my years combined in school. Mm. Now, they, they asked me to make it three A's in one summer now. Mm. But I'm, 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 I'm talking about these positive affirmations at this point, saying because I'm telling myself I can't. At this point, I'm six months clean. So my mind had kind of changed some. And so I went and I got the three A's. And so I got another opportunity to get a scholarship at Pfeiffer University. And when I, graduate, when I graduated from Pfeiffer, I graduated with 3.5 GPA. My life was different. And because now I am sitting in the front of the classroom, I ain't sitting at the back. I'm mm -hmm. studying, I'm grinding, I'm doing what it is that I need to do. So now, all them times that I, I'm getting else and I'm thinking I'm dumb, it wasn't that I'm done, I just never applied myself. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm applying myself and I got everything life had to offer from that point. And, and so uh, when I graduated back in 1990s, when I graduated back in, and here's the thing, they not only paid for me to go that one year, then they paid for me to go back that next year to get my degree. Mm. So, so, God, good, uh, so when, so how I got into the coaching back in 1996, um, Rod Seifert, I played for the Royals. Mm. I played for the Royals. Rod so Seifer. Rod Seifert, Rod Seifert, I've been, I actually, I, I was on like one of the first Royals team, but because before it was the Royals, the only team in Charlotte were the Sonics, the Charlotte Sonics. Mm -hmm. Which is the Charlotte Nets now? I'm gonna give you a little bit of history. Yeah, which is the that. Charlotte, which is the Charlotte Nets now? Okay. They formed. They are forming in the Sonics, and so I played with the Sonics and and all of them. And and see, back then you only had but one AAU team, so you had to be good to make that AAU team. <laughs> right. And so you know, we we came in second in the nation. Yeah, that's when we had Rodney Farrell and Larry Crowder. We played against Anthony Hardaway, Todd Day, and all of them. We played against them in the championship game in. Vegas and I was in the sixth grade and so you know um during that time uh 
so when when I played, went to the Royals, and then I started coaching for the Royals. Mm-hmm. And when I was uh, right when I got clean, and that's that's what brought me on into it. And then I end up coaching with the Charlotte Stars, you know, and end up building one of the top eight year old teams in the country. That's when I had uh, Tyshawn Alexander, Leaky Black. Leaky Black was six years old at the time. We was one of the top. Five, we was one of the top five teams in the country. Eight year old, we came second in the nation. And you know that's when Kevin Gray's he was coaching, um, he was coaching a, a, a eight year old team out of Winston Salem. He had a very good team. He had Harry Giles and all of them. So we all used to battle during that time. And so that's how my career really started building in that right then. I just from that point I just stayed with it, got into because at that point I wanted to work with kids so they didn't have to go through what I had to go through to show them that hold up if you want to play basketball your character got to supersede your talent. So yeah. that's when I got deep because now I'm working in the field. I'm working with kids and I'm a counselor and, and, and all of this. So now it is more than basketball to me. Now I'm where I'm coaching basketball because I want to be that coach that's looked at more than a coach. I want to be looked at somebody to say, you know what? He's more than my coach. He's a friend. He's a mentor. He's everything. So that's how I end up getting into coaches in the early nineties. Now, and recently a couple of years ago, you were coaching uh team loaded and that team yeah. was, Loaded. That was loaded. Why don't you tell everybody who was on that squad? Oh, man, man, man. There were some great days right there. We had Dennis Smith Jr. We had Bam Adebayo. Uh, we had Brandon Robinson, Brandon from Carolina. Um, we had um, – and, 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 and I say this guy is the X factor. People really didn't know who he was until I brought him up. This guy by the name of Larry McLeod. Larry McLeod is probably the most athletic, the most he's the hardest worker that kid that I probably ever seen. And so, you know, we had a bomb squad and and just that 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 right that that experience alone right there, there was something because it's just like I've never seen other high school students try to get autographs of other high school players. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> But everywhere we went, they was they was lined up at the door trying to get Dennis and Bam autographs. And I'm right, like, hold right. up, you get you getting ready to play against these guys. And you trying to and we had Sean, we had Sean Kirk. Oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. We had high Sean flying, Kirk. Sean Kirk. Ah, right. we had high flying Sean. You know, so we we had a you know, we had a bomb squad and then that was a team loaded North Carolina, not to mention team loaded Virginia. They had Mama Dude. And you know they had that uh, uh, a j- job and play for Duke and and so just a team loaded family as a whole man and Thom Maker play with that play with that Virginia team so just a team loaded family as a whole what Ty White just put together uh, him and Bettis put together up there it was just amazing man so that was just a great opportunity just to be a part of something that special right there right right you know. Uh, I love hearing some of you OGs talk, man, that, that I've been knowing for years. In fact, I had I had my man Harold Johnson on last week. And, That's my and, dude. And I know y'all go way back, don't you? Me and Harold go way back. Me and Harold go back to the early 90s because when I started coaching and everything, me and Harold go back because he the one got me introduced to Firestar. And we end up opening a Firestar office down here in Charlotte. And when yeah, we opened the office, big then. yeah, yeah, big. yeah, yeah, it was real big. And, and so we would do camps every weekend. And then he, you know, he got me connected to go do the camp, the guard camp up there in the Poconos. So mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. go up to the Poconos and then we brought another friend of ours on, Coach Vince Walden. He coached at Texas A&M now with Buzz. And so we brought, so we brought Vince because at the time, Vince, I was a director of this facility, this treatment facility in Charlotte. And Vince Walden was one of my counselors. And so we brought Vince alone. And, and so just to see where his career has gone as a result of that, man, you know, that, uh, you know, I'm proud of him. And, 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 and I love to see that. Uh, but I think one of the things that I love about Hara, Hara always wanted to say, okay, what can I do to help somebody else? So he'll be, you know, he'll jump to the opportunity to bring somebody along to help them get to wherever it is that they want to get to. Because he got, he got, mad, he got mad poor with five star. With oh, yeah. and, no, and all yeah. of that. Yeah. And, and, and he because they named the trophy after his brother. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, Ron Johnson. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so, you, so. Yeah, I know. So, so you've been around that game for a long time, you know, back when five star was 
was was the camp to go to. No. Now, it was the only camp. Yeah, yeah, you had to go to that camp, right? You, you had to, so, if you wanted to be known, you had to go to Five Star. Right now, how has the the whole culture of basketball changed to you since from those days to now? Well, number one, it changed finances. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you, you know, when I first came around, they ain't had them shoe companies. Right. You know, when them, <laughs> shoe, when, them shoe, when, when them shoe companies came into the game, man, that changed the whole landscape of everything right there because during the time I was around, it was there, everybody was just trying to get on the AAU team and make it to the Nationals. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that it was right. just every all of the top players was AAU. So now guys don't even really play AAU no more. And it, it, it's all about trying to get on one the, on that shoe circuit, whether it's Adidas, Nike, uh, EYBL, or the Under Armour circuit. And and so, but another way it changed, man, is because nowadays you got 500 AAU teams in one area. Mm. You know, it ain't people don't really come together. So you got guys that really probably not that good, but they say, I play AAU, I do this and I do that. And you really, because if one if, if somebody didn't make a team, then they father go start a team or they or they fell out because everybody got see now it's separate. Everybody got their own motives and their own, you know, their own reason for being in it because everybody wants that big payday. And and you right. know, so I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I think it's very few people that's in the game that still got that love for it. That back when I first started, people was doing it because they loved it. It wasn't about the money. It this is what they love to do. Mm -hmm. But now it's about I want my kid to be that next LeBron. I want my kid. And and and, and nowadays, man, it's a lot of kids, man. I'm not going to say they're not coachable, but it's hard because the parents got a different uh, uh, itinerary and a different agenda than what the coach got. And if things don't work out, well, I'm going to take them off the team. I'm going to give them to somebody else. Well, mm -hmm. he still got to be coached. He still right, got to be right. coached. I can make a. I can make a. You can. You can take that highlight tape that 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 I did that you showed at the beginning. I can send that around to everybody, but that don't really tell you me about a player. And so you know, but a lot of guys they can make a highlight tape, but they still don't know the fundamentals of basketball. Right. The right. basic. And, nah, and so nah. I, I think, and, and that, and that, that's that. That's done change uh, from from when I run because when I was around, people was trying to learn the fundamentals, and we taught the fundamentals, we taught the game. But nowadays, coaches don't want to teach the game because they don't want to hear from the parents. They don't want the parents to say this. They don't want to lose this player. And then you got so much riff riffraff, and then you got coaches fighting over players and all of this. So it is, you know, it's done got kind of messy uh, out for, from that standpoint because you got so many finances and the, the finance is just crazy in it now. No, that, that's absolutely and. And I think that's, you know, when they teach, you know, if you don't like it, leave. I guess that's an attest to why the transfer portal is so busy right now. That's you know what why I mean? it's so busy. That's yeah. why it's so busy. And, you know, and, and, it, and, and it's not led and, isn't, and, and it's not gotten into the high schools. And yeah. that's the mindset. That, so you got all this transferring and this and that, you know, because, you know, Guys want you to stroke their ego and tell them how good because they whole life people been telling them how good they are. You good, you good, and I'm just not cut like that. I, you know, I'm a I'm a coach. Right. If, if you right. good, well, yeah, you good, but guess what? You can be much better. So yeah. let's, so so if you want to be the best, we're gonna work like we're the best. And yes. I tell people all the time, don't cheat the grind because if you cheat the grind, the grind gonna cheat on you at the most at the time when you don't think it is. That's right. No, that's so good. You can't, that's right. you can't you can't cheat hard work. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And one thing I love about you, man, you spit so much knowledge and you become this motivational speaker. And but what what really inspired you to become a motivational speaker? Well, I think because of my because of my background, man. Because of because of my background and you know, I had all these accolades in basketball. I did this and I did that. But God saved me for a reason. It was a reason why I didn't die because I had many opportunities when I was out there when I, when I should have been dead. And so he just gave me that gift to really just to, just to go out and talk about my experience in life and, and share with just share with people. It don't necessarily have to be kids. Just share with people, man, that you that 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 is hope. I don't care what it is that you go through, and I don't care what experiences you face, and I don't care what what your tough times are. 
you can't overcome. I live by the saying, I listen to my man Eric Thomas every day. And one of the things he always saying, I can, I will, I must. I don't care what it is I go through. I don't care what to, I can, I will, I must. I can be great. I, I will be great. I must be great. And so that inspires me to to share with other people. And, and, and that's my way of ministering. It ain't about sitting up in a poor pit or nothing like that. That's the ministry, and that's what God gave me, and I'd be a fool not to share it. No, great stuff, man, great stuff. And, and recently, um, a few months back or a year or so, or some, you know, not too long ago, I remember you stepped away from basketball for a little bit and, yeah. um, you know, just took a break from it. Now, yeah. what? why was that, and do you have any plans of coming back? Well, uh, personal, personal reasons, and, and and one of the reasons why I stepped away, man, because uh, people think just when you when when you're a counselor and you this that you don't have problems of yourself. And I had got so used to helping everybody else with theirs and being there for everybody else. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm not afraid to say anything. Mental health is real. Mental health is real. And despite everything that I had went through, I end up having a mental breakdown, doc. I had went through a very, I had went through a situation with my wife and, and some other things happened in my life. And, and so um, I just, I got to a place where, where basketball was no longer even important to me. I really just had to figure out and step back. And I just figured I had to figure out who Corey was again. And it, again, it wasn't about the basketball. So when I tell you mental health real, I was at a place in my life again, uh, Lamont, where, where I was in 1994. Uh, I was in a place where um, living, I really didn't even want to live no more. And, and, it, and, and it wasn't even about the drugs at that point. It was just about life and mm -hmm. doing just living life and what, what I had just went through. I had went through a, a very difficult situation and I'm pretty sure people I know, you know, it ended up being in the newspaper. Me and my wife got into an altercation. I was coaching at Northwood Temple at the time and, and when I was coaching at Northwood Temple and then they ended up letting me go behind and without even investigating and it became, it was very, I was very, it, it became an embarrassing moment for me. I was a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of looking. And at that point, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man, I really didn't even want to live. Living, living, I was like, why God me? Why me? I done did, you know, and, and, and it was like me, 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 me. You know, I did this, I did this. And, and, and God said, you know, had to say, hold up, it ain't about you. The, the, the glory is mine. And, and, and so um, I went through I went through a very, 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 very difficult time, man, and and so and uh, and still haven't got back into basketball. Still hadn't got back into it. Haven't coached. Haven't trained. Haven't done anything dealing with basketball. And that and that was uh that was uh been since uh, uh December of nineteen uh, of of uh, two thousand seventeen. But I still haven't done that. With now I'm in a different place than where I was then, but, um, you know, I, I plan to get back in basketball, but I'm not, I don't give no time. I will when God, I will when God say, okay, Corey, it's that time again. It, it's that time no, again. Man. I'm, I'm not going to say what I'm going to do. No, I, I appreciate that, man. And your honesty is going to help someone, you know, because yeah. Yeah. people are ashamed of their problems and, and sometimes don't realize that you're not alone. You know, but sometimes we feel like it's us and, and yeah. we're the only ones struggling for, for you know, mm -hmm. for, and, and, and we're going through the worst situation anybody's ever been through. And, yeah. and, and, and we feel alone, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 you know, hearing your words, I, I promise you, I, I feel it in my spirit. Someone's listening that needed to listen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I want to thank you for sharing your words no. and your honesty, man. And and that alone is inspirational and why I wanted to bring you on here. And, you know, and we're living in crazy times right now. It's, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of people between the, the quarantine and, 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 and George Floyd's death and, and, <laughs> and the rioting. Yeah. You know, the world, there's a lot of people out there hurting. There's a lot of people out there depressed. There's a lot of people that may not feel like living. And they got to understand 
there are Corey Bakers who survive and thrive. You know, yes. and, and, and it's not always um, you're going to reach a finish line. It's a it's a daily struggle. It's, it's a, a daily it's struggle. A daily. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, it ain't even dated. Sometimes well, even with my life right now, it's second by second, you know, uh, uh, because you're still going to go through things that's going to be very hurtful. And think, I just lost my younger brother. And out of everything else that I've been through in my life, that probably hurt me more than anything else. And that was coming up right back out two months before that I had lost my aunt. And so my family was dealing with, we dealing with some very difficult times. And, and, and that was, and even now that was another time where I just wanted to give up and give up, but I wanted to, but I know that I can't. And I know there's a reason behind it. And, and that's why I just, and, and that's why I let people know. And I'm going to be honest with you, Lamont. I lost a lot of people who I thought was my friends within his last three years because people who I thought was close to me, they wasn't nowhere to be found. I mean, you know, people talking junk and people this or baker this and baker this. And I'm looking like, whoa. And, you know, because when I tell you I lost everything in the month, I lost everything. I can remember, and I tell you this one, I remember I called you one day and I said, Lamont, man, hey, man, I'm in, I'm in a bad place, man. Can you do And what did you do? You answered my call. You said, Bake, I got you. And you sent it right away. You know, uh, but I just, and, you know, I just couldn't do that with anybody because then now people were talking, man, the stuff that I heard about. And, and I think that that real people who I read, who I help get to a, to a different level and thing. But, you know, God, God told me, Corey, that was his way of telling me where I'm taking you. They can't go with you. So I got to get them away from you anyway. That's and, right. and so and so I came to terms with that. And so that's why I say right now my circle is very, very small. Uh, but yet I know that regardless of whatever it is that I've been through, it's a reason. But I tell people all the time, I'll be back. And, and I am back because I'm living right now. I'm living. God then gave me a different message. He done gave me a different story. And he gave me a different out outlook on things. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Now, it ain't so much about basketball as much as it is about him and life. No, man. That that alone, man, it, it just it just gives me chills, Buck, because I you know you my guy, man, and you know, I'd hit you up like like, like I did the other day. Yo, Corey, what's going on, man? Just checking just, in. I know, just checking on me. Just checking, just checking in on me. Now, and you don't know what that meant to me, man. That meant a lot to now, me. Well, you know, my thing is is you know, when you're genuine, you don't you don't disappear. You check you know, you you know, we, we may forget to call one another, but if 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 our friendship is, is genuine, when I talk to you, it's going to be the same as if it was yesterday. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, it ain't my job to judge what you've been through or what you're going through or what you, you know, going to go through. My job is to, is to be there for you if you need me. And, yes. and, and, and we don't have much time left, but what, what's next for Corey? Well, I think what's next for me, man, is, um, uh, right now, I'm preparing to get, and, and I don't, I don't know what aspect of the ministry because I don't know what it is, and that, but right now, man, right now, I'm, 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 a lot of my attention is really just strengthening my relationship with God. Uh, I do, a, you know, I'm uh, do a lot of studying and with Bible study with, um, with, uh, with, with, with my bishop, and so right now, that's my next phase. That, that's the next phase in my life now. I don't know and how that's going to look like or what that's going to look like. You know, I still work in my field. You know, I'm a licensed therapist, you know, um, and, and, uh, but just continuously seeking what it is God how for me, but whatever it is, is something geared to more the, than, 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 than what he have and not what Corey have. That's right. Now, my last question here, uh, what do you want, the legacy of Corey Baker to be when it's all said and done. Well, one of the things Martin Luther King said, don't, don't, don't remember me by my Nobel Peace Prize and all my accolades and all that. Don't remember me because me being a basketball coach. You don't remember me because uh, I was a good basketball player. Don't remember me because I did this, I did that. Remember me as 
He's somebody that's willing to help. He was always there, and he'll help whoever it is he can help. He didn't care, and 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 the deeds and the good deeds that I did for man and for this world and for society. You know, that's how I want to be because I want my legacy to move on. Basketball people forget about what you did basketball. You know, however the players I don't coach, I don't coach some of the top players in the country. College right now, that's in college. Guy, I got guys that's in the NBA other than Junior and Dennis and things. I don't coach, but people forget about that. But people won't forget about if you if you always got a good heart and you was honest, you were respectful, and you was a good person, and you had character. People never forget about you. So I want my legacy to be, that's what I want my legacy to be, to say, you know what? That was a great guy. He was loving. He was kind. He was respectful. And he'll do whatever it is he needed to do to, he to help you. He'll give you his last. Yeah. And, that's how I want, and that's what I want my legacy to be. Great stuff, man. Well, you're doing a great job at it. And let me be the first one to tell you, man, you, you've been such an inspiration to so many people, including myself. And, and I want to thank you for that. You know, and, and I appreciate you coming on tonight. However, before I let you go now, I'm not going to let you go yet, all right? <laughs> we, to, we, we have what we call, right, Trivia Tuesdays, right? Trivia <laughs> Tuesdays. We're not going to let okay. you go until we okay. get your own Trivia Tuesday. Now, you being an Oak Hill guy and y'all of this community and this and this, we're going to test. We're going to test your Oak Hill knowledge, all right? Okay. We got, we got 10 <laughs> questions for you. We got 10 questions. 10. You, all right. 10. Ten questions. Oh, okay. 10 questions. Here we go. Question number one. He was an Oak Hill alum, 2003, number three draft pick, played at Syracuse. Carmelo Anthony. Huh? Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony. All right. You on the road. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We talking Oak Hill. We talking Oak Hill only. All right. Now it's going to get a little harder here. How many times has Oak Hill been crowned national champions? Was it oh. A4, B7, C9, or D14? Oh, right. man. Okay. All right, cool. man, hold This is home. Hold on. Hold on. Hold up. Okay, hold up. I'm trying to pitch. I'm trying to visualize the banners in the gym. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with seven. You're going to go with seven? Let's see what the answer is. The answer is nine. Oh, oh it has nine. Big time. We got nine. <laughs> they got nine of them joints, man. Legendary. Legendary. Here we go. Oh, okay. man. Question number three. Oak Hill alum, 2007 McDonald's All-American, uh, game MVP, played at Kansas State, and was the number two draft pick in 2008. All right, he from D.C. He originally signed at, at UNCC. He pulled out when uh when your boy left from UNCC, and then he went to uh what's his name? Big light skin guy. Uh oh uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, big light skin guy. Come on, people, yeah. help him out. Played at K State for one year. Then he then then he left after his first year. Um, oh what is it? Oh I can't even we, think we, of his we, name. We <laughs> Play with DC Salt. Play with DC Salt. That's right. We don't want you to have a stroke. We're gonna we're gonna pull it for you. Here we go. Michael Beasley. Michael yeah, Michael Beasley. Beasley. Michael Beasley. Yeah. yeah. That's, right. That's right. Yeah. That's hey, right. That's I right. couldn't think of a name, but I knew who he was. All right. Here we go. We back to number four. Here we go. How many times has Coach Smith won U.S. State today's Coach of the Year? We have. None, B, one, two, C, uh, four times. B, four. D, uh -huh. D. D, D it is, D, four times. Coach <laughs> Smith been U.S. Day's coach of the year. All right, man, all right. Where we going? We're going to the halfway point. All right, here we go. Another Oak Hill alum, played at Carolina, number three draft pick, NBA All-Star, and now coaches at Vanderbilt. Jerry Stackhouse. Jerry Stackhouse, it is another <laughs> Oak Hill legend. He, he, he played. He played. He played with my boy Touche. Touche, <laughs> Jeff McGinnis, my guy. He played with my boy. He played with my pep. He played with my boy Jeff. Right, right. All right, here we go. Let's go. We're going with question six. 
How many McDonald's All American has Ooh. produced? All right, we're going. Ooh. Let's check the numbers here. A Oof. eight, B eighteen, C twenty eight, D thirty eight. I'm gonna go with thirty eight, cuz. No, no, Not I'm gonna right. go. It's twenty eight. No, that's what I was finna say. I was finna say C. All right. <laughs> All right. Twenty eight, but that's a large number, brother. That's, that's a large, large number. <laughs> yeah, that's a large number. Now here we go. We're going. We're going with another one. All right, here we go. Oak Hill alum played at Texas. Number two draft pick. NBA Kevin Durant. MVP Kevin Durant. And NBA champion. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, another <laughs> Oak Hill product. Hey, no, hey, no question. Hey, well, hey, what school did he graduated from? You went out on me. Say that what again. school? Did he, what what high school did he graduate from? You tell me. I know you know. <laughs> it wasn't Oak Hill. It wasn't Oak Hill. He transferred out. He, he transferred after his junior year. It was him, Ty Lawson, uh, and all of those guys that had the white boy, Devendorf, and all that. That's when they were loaded. They were loaded. He transferred to play with Stu Vetter up there in that D.C. area. Transferred. Uh, I can't even think of the new. He, he transferred senior and played with Stu Vetter. I think it was Riverdale Baptist, wasn't it? No, it wasn't Riverdale. It was, Riverdale. I forgot no, it wasn't Riverdale, but it was he played. It was it, wherever Stu Vetter was at. That's where he went and played at. I remember it was in D.C. Uh, yeah, it, it was right around that area. But I can't even I can't even remember I'm, the you name. Got, you got me thinking now. I'm, I'm yeah, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up because I remember that. I remember that. But, um, but we still oh, consider him. We still no, consider you know him. What, you know what? Trey just reminded me. He did. He went to Montrose. That's Montrose, that's, that's it. Right. Montrose Christian. That's, Montrose that's, Christian. That's exactly right. I that, that, that's right. Montrose Christian. That's right. That's right. right. He went here, to, we here we go. I know a little bit. <laughs> All right, here we go. Second to last. How many Oak Hill players have been drafted in the NBA? We got A5, B10, C15, or D17? I'm going to go with C15. C15. Let's see what it is. Actually, 17. 17. God. 17. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's, that's the most, ain't it? Yeah, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. All right, <laughs> here we go. Last question. Last question. We got about three minutes before we get out of here. Here we go. Last question. Can you name at least two of the Oak Hill players named to the Basketball Hall of Fame? Just two. There have been six. Can you name two? In the Ross Griffin. Ross Strickland. Okay. And to the basket. Oh, man. To, to uh, Ross Strickland. And oh, man. All right. Time mm -hmm. ticking. Tick, tick. Ross Strickland and Lloyd Daniels. That's who you're going with. Ross Strickland and Lloyd Daniels. Oh, not quite. Calvin Duncan, Rod Strickland, Jerry Stackhouse, Josh Smith, Carmelo, Anthony. Oh, oh you talking about to the Oak Hill Hall of Fame? Basketball Hall of Fame, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I thought you was just talking about, okay. I thought yep. you was talking about just like the NBA. Okay. Yeah, Calvin right. Duncan was that dude. Calvin Duncan That's was right. that dude. That's right. Calvin we Duncan. got one more question. We got one more question. All right. Here we go. All right. Now, I'm pretty sure you should be able to get this one. Here we go. Oak Hill alone, McDonald's All-American was – Considered one of the quickest point guards in his era, Oak Hill assist record was broke by Ty Lawson. <laughs> Corey Baker. <laughs> Corey Baker. <laughs> Corey Baker. <laughs> Ty Lawson. Hey, Ty Lawson broken in two thousand and five. That's right. That's right, my man. Well, Corey, again, we got to get out of here, man. But I appreciate you coming, my brother. Oh, um, thank you, man. Thank you so much for having me on here, man, and the opportunity to uh, to have him, man. If there's anything that I can do, man, definitely let me know. I'm always around. I'm back down here in Charlotte now, so, you know, you always know how to reach, man. No question, man. Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon, my brother. Okay, man. Wish you the best. All right. There you have it, Mr. Corey Baker, uh, legend from Oak Hill. Great message, great inspirational story. This will be posted on my IG for you to watch later or have anybody else. Thursday, Thursday, Grammy Award-winning producer Ninth Wonder will be 
on courtside conversations here Thursday. That's right. And we'll find out why the Grammy Award winning producer is on our basketball show Thursday. So again, I want to appreciate, uh, tell you how much I appreciate you all for joining in and we'll see you Thursday for the next episode of courtside conversations. <laughs>